and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial this will be the final part of our procedures tutorial and let's start off with operator overloading so what exactly is an operator when we go echo one plus two as an example this plus here is what's considered an operator now when you overload an operator, what you are doing is you're giving that operator a new function. As an example, let's go and put here 10 minus 7. As an example, if we run that, we know we will get 3. And then let's overwrite or overload this symbol here that when it gets two integers, it will add them instead of subtract. So procedure, and then in these quotes here, we're just going to put a minus symbol there. Note that these quotes are not the single quotes or the double quotes, but the back ticks. You'll find them left to the one on a normal US QWERTY keyboard. Then it's just a normal function that will take in usually two parameters. So X and Y, and we can say both of them will be integers. This here will define what this operator will be overloading and we'll get to why that is important in a second and it returns an integer then we can just return x plus y now when we run this code we'll get 17 because now 10 is being added to 7 because that is what we're saying this minus symbol should do but take note if we go 7.9 and we run this we'll get 2.1 the reason for that is we are only overwriting this operator for integer values. Both of these values will need to be integers in order for this to work. If one of them is not an integer or both of them are not integers, this will not work. Now, a useful scenario for this could be, let's say you want to create a function that will add strings together. You know, if we go I am plus cool this will cause an error because you cannot use a plus symbol with a string but if we do this and we say x and y should be a string and it will return a string then we can just put an ampersand there and now we can use a plus symbol instead of an ampersand meaning i am cool perfect output so you can already see how this is becoming a very useful feature now, generally, I would always recommend you stay away from operator overloading unless you need to do it. Let's say you have your own data type, which we'll get to in a future tutorial. But let's say you have your own object. You cannot subtract one object or class or whatever you want to call it from another. So whilst I'm giving you a very basic example, it can be used for more powerful features. Now, with a procedure, you can also use an auto type to guess the type of a parameter and return the type that you want. As an example, let's say procedure do it and do it takes an X of type auto and it also returns an auto. And then what we do is we say return. And actually, let's use result. We almost never use result. I think we can use a little bit of practice with it. And that's a 99 plus X. Now, for those of you who couldn't remember, result will basically just return at the end of a function. In this case, we could have just as well gone return and it wouldn't have made a difference. Anyhow, now let's say we go echo do it. And let's say 10. Now this will automatically determine that x should be of type int and it will automatically figure that out because we are telling it that this can be any type that can be added to 99. If we run this, it works. If we put 10.9, it will work. So if, whether that's a float or an integer or if we put a string here, you'll notice we actually get an error because this auto cannot do it as X is not capable of adding a string to an integer like that. So if we run this, Nim is smart enough to throw us an error at compile time telling us, no, 
you cannot do this. So auto will automatically figure out what type is being passed in and what type should be returned. Now, when exactly should you use auto like we're doing here? Generally, if you do not know the type of something, let's say you're importing an external library, but you do not know the type that that function is going or that variable is or something like that, you could use auto to store it and it will figure it out on its own. However, try and stay away from auto as much as possible due to the fact that auto removes features from NIM that we usually want in a statically typed language. Cool. Next up, let's talk about static. Static is a value that cannot be changed. This means that it has to be a set value when used in a function, meaning you should know what that value is in compile time or during compile time. For those of you who don't understand, you have two times that I'm talking about. You have compile time and you have a runtime. Compile time is when you compile the program and runtime is when you run the program. If something happens during compile time, then when the program compiles, it will be able to know what something is or to throw an error or whatnot. That's why you get runtime errors, which only happens when you run the program and compile time errors, which only happens when you compile the program. So static means that something should be known at compile time. And as we know, let and var cannot be used in compile time or they're not valid variables for compile time since they can be set by runtime. As an example, let's say procedure speak and speak will take in a name, which is a string and then a script, which is a static string. So note the word static here, and then that can just echo out name and then the script. So we could do something like let ghost is equal to ghostly jack. And then we can say speak ghost. And let's put a normal string in here first. Boo, what are you doing here? Cool. So let's run this, see what output we get. And we get what we expect. However, we should take note that if we were to go here and say let a C for script and we were to just take this, put that there and put a C in here, we will get an error because let is not a valid compile time value. So if we were to make this const instead, it would work as expected because const is available in compile term or during compile time. This means that when someone uses this function, they should know for certain what the value is they're going to pass in here, since it will be known at compile time. So that is what the static keyword does. It just basically means the variable being passed in here needs to be known at compile time and not at run or it can be known at runtime, but it should be known at compile time. Now let's take a look at anonymous functions. Now, an anonymous function is a function that is generally without a name. It can be with a name such as var summon summation. There we go. And we make that equal to, and then in brackets, we say procedure, num1, num2, both for integers. And then we say int and num1 plus num2. This is a valid function. There may might be no return or result, but this will be returned. If we were to go here and echo out summation of seven and nine, we'll get the sum of those two numbers. In fact, we could go like this and in seven and nine, then if we save it, it will work as well. So this, procedure, which is called an anonymous function or an anonymous procedure can be used without actually giving it a name. You might be wondering where exactly is something like this useful? Let's take the map 
function as an example. So let's echo out map and then we throw a sequence in here. And we just need to import seg utils. There we go. Now you throw a sequence in here. One, two, three. And then we can put an anonymous function in here. Let's remove that one. So we can say procedure. And then the value we get, and I'm going to explain all of this in a second, which then returns an int. And we get x times 10. All right, if we run this, we get 10, 20, 30. So what is happening is we are passing in this sequence. Then we're saying map through it, meaning for each value. So it's like a for loop for each value inside of the sequence. Run this procedure for us. So this x would first be 1 and then it's 1 times 10. That will give us 10. Then we'll go to the next value, 2. That will become x. So 2 times 10, that's 20. And then 3, 3 times 10. That is what we are doing. For each value in here, run this function. Now this is the same as going for x in at 1, 2, 3. And this is go for val is equal to like that. And we say val dot add x times 10 and an echo val. And here we should of course just say at sequence and not an at but let's sequence int. There we go. So this here is basically not exactly but it's basically doing this. It's creating this for loop for us and it's all being done in one line. We just need to pass in this anonymous function. This is a use case where an anonymous function can be really useful. If you come from JavaScript, you will automatically use anonymous functions so much. In fact, we can make our anonymous functions look very similar to the anonymous functions in JavaScript. If we go here and import sugar, we can use sugar syntax to make this anonymous function look more like the ES6 syntax for anonymous function. If it sounds like I'm speaking gibberish, do not worry. All that sugar is going to do is allow us to use sugar syntax, meaning our syntax can become a little bit easier. So instead of doing all of this, we just go like that. And we can also remove this procedure keyword here. And now sugar syntax has made it very similar to the JavaScript syntax. That is that for anonymous functions. They're this simple. If we wanted to, we could even go let times func and go like that and just say times func and it pass times func in here. This would work exactly the same. There we go. And that is about that for procedures. As always, there's of course a lot more we could cover, but I think three parts on this topic is more than enough. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.